Hi guys, it's Tim here from cleverbodybuilding.com and today we've got a super treat for you. Um, we've got Paul Sutton, um, one of my bodybuilding heroes um, in the house today. Nice to meet you Paul again. Thank you Tim. Thank yeah, you. Thank pleasure you. having you Thank here. You. Now Paul's a very uh, successful bodybuilder, um, probably one of the most successful amateur bodybuilders um, we've ever had. Paul has got three um, Mr. Universe titles, um, one at a class four, one at over 40s, and one at over 50s in three separate uh, genres, mm -hmm. which is uh, yeah. pretty impressive. And also three world titles, uh, mm -hmm. all at class four. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Paul's done over 150 shows. Yeah. At least. Yeah, started 35 years ago. 35 years ago. And Paul is also um, a 15 years uh, a NABA judge. So, uh, very credible guy. <laughs> okay, so um, we'll get cracking on this then, Paul. So, yes. what actually got you into bodybuilding to start with? I started lifting when I was about 15. Um, I grew up with my mum and four sisters, so I think I'd look for something masculine. Okay. And I realised that I did enjoy lifting, lifting weights. Getting into bodybuilding itself, um, I can't really remember what made me want to um, compete on the stage. I got talked into it by a few guys in a little gym where I trained right at the beginning and I loved it. The first time was in 1984. 1984, and it, yeah, wow. And it was just, um, it was great for my efforts. I came third out of five. I got a small plastic shelf, you know, bigger than that bottle. <laughs> um, but it's got pride of place in my cabinet at home. Yeah, that's the first one. That's the beginner. That's, that's, that's the journey starts yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> Never thought in a million years I'd get, reach the height to have. Um, um, but thank, thank God. Yeah, yes, and you've done all right. You've done very well, Paul. Yeah. Very, very well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So obviously you've had a very long career. Yeah. So far, and you're still going. You've got uh, the uh, universe coming up, defending oh. champion. Yeah. Uh, eight weeks time. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, so uh, what are your fondest memories? I've had lots and lots, Tim. Lots. <laughs> yeah, I um, can imagine. <clears throat> um, I say the first first competition was is, is vivid. Um, I've been lucky. I've travelled quite a bit with yourself. Went to Australia in two thousand four. We did. Yeah. I made lots of good friends. Met a lot of good good people from I say far and wide. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a nice bodybuilding community that we have. I do think that we are very, everyone's competitive, but the biggest majority of people, it really is a brotherhood. Brotherhood, totally. I'm not, I'm not discounting the girls there as well. There is a, a, it's a nice friendly atmosphere between everybody. Yeah. Everyone appreciates the hard work that everybody else puts in. That's true, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. I mean, that's, yeah. uh, that's one thing I've, always uh, thought myself like mm -hmm. you know you you can you meet someone once and then the next time you meet them it's like how are you doing you're right yeah, it's like yeah. you know you're getting on and it's like you, you're mates again straight away isn't it yes it's yeah. brilliant yeah it's cool so it, I got, this my next question for you is what do you like the most about bodybuilding but have we sort of answered half that um i think we are we've covered a lot of it i, li I like the training yeah um <clears throat> i like the off-season training and the bigger eating <laughs> um, but then I do like to see see my body change yeah. when I'm preparing for a contest. Mm. It's quite fascinating, even after all these years, the way your body changes. That's um, right. Obviously, striving to try and be that little bit better. Yeah. As I'm as I'm getting older, I'm starting to realise it's difficult to get much better. <laughs> but um, but you still do very well at that. Ball. I'm doing. I, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows how long the days are going to last? Though. <laughs> you keep going till you uh, you want to, doesn't it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay then, so we um, talked a little bit of, uh, briefly about just general bodybuilding there, but what are your sort of dietary theories when coming, going into, <coughs> into bodybuilding? Consistency. Yeah. We train as, as diet. Consist the, the, the old adage, consistency is the key. Yeah. You, you know, you, you've got to train three, four, ideally five times a week, I think. Mm -hmm. And you need to eat your, your protein, which is your muscle food, for me, that that is the, the, the most important. I'm not saying carbohydrates and fats aren't important, but mm. your protein is your, you know, that's what makes your muscle tissue, isn't it? Totally. So, um, yeah, and I work on about 300 grams a day of protein. Yeah, that's a good amount. You know? 
That's good, man. How would you um, suggest that uh, to, to a general bodybuilder out well, there? Well, no, I work on one and a half, one and a half grams per pound of body weight. Okay, that's a nice ratio there for you guys yeah. to take that away with you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll say off season you might you'll add that you'll you'd go up to probably two, possibly more yeah. more grams per, per pound because yeah. that's when you're trying to add some more muscle tissue, isn't it? Totally. Yeah. You know, get a bit of growth in there. Yeah. Which is our hard work, isn't it? It is, yeah. <laughs> do you do anything specific with nutrition uh, around the year? Do you do anything different or do you just stick to your bulking and cutting principles? As I say, the basics of the <clears throat> of it all are, I say, getting your protein content in. The difference between off-season and, and contest prep is obviously the amount of carbs you take. Um, I dare say the allowance of more junk food yeah. in the off-season. Um, as long as you don't get too out of condition. Yeah. Um, and it's hard to put a pound, a, a, an amount of a poundage on how much. These are wild numbers, but to go out of condition three stone is, is a lot of weight, isn't it? It's a lot to lose in a cut, isn't it? Yeah, but yeah. I think, depending on, on your age and your body type, that should that you should be able to, as I say, to put that much on, you should be able to build some build some more muscle tissue in that time. You don't say, wouldn't you? Yeah. And then as I say, to lose what we're talking there, forty two pounds. So if you prepare, depend on your body type again. If you prepare in your contest prep, you start twenty weeks out or something, and a slow, slow winding. Yeah, that's it. You should be able to take forty pounds. You will. Obviously, less than forty pounds. You built some muscle tissue out of that. Yeah, yeah. Do you, if you've you worked know? hard enough, you should yes. get some muscle, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 I know um, a friend of mine, Pete, uh, Pete Byrne from Liverpool. Mm -hmm. um, he used to lose about four and a half stone. Wow. Well, yeah, but yeah. he did have. To, he had like a thirty-week contest yes. prep, but then yeah. I think it did affect a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, it always came in very good nick. Yeah. But I think it was a harsh diet, and I think uh, yeah, that might affect it a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. It's a funny system. It's tough, definitely. Mm -hmm. So, uh, do you have anything specific when you train? Do you take um, protein drinks and stuff when you drink? Yes, yeah, certainly. Yeah. drinks? Or what do you um, do? I have a, I have a pre-workout before a train. Um, and then obviously a protein drink when you finish, because yeah. you need the most important food of the day is replenishing when you finish training, isn't it? it certainly is, yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, so, a lot of talk about nutrition there. Yeah. Okay, but um, training there. What yeah. are your training methods? What do you like to do? To give you average number, I think 15 sets um, in a workout, whichever body part you're doing, there may be slight changes in that, but I think if you do 15 sets on a body part, and my rep range is eight to 10. Yeah. Um, with as much weight as possible, but it's got to be controlled. Yeah, totally. If you wild, you'll just cut, you'll do damage. It, that, that's. I guess I'm realising that more as I'm getting older, because when you're younger, you seem to fix quicker. Well, that's the way you feel, you know. That's true, isn't it, yeah. Yeah, you twinge something when you're 20, isn't it? Fixes overnight, you twinge something in your 40s and 50s, it takes three weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Do you know what I feel in that now, yeah. my shoulders? <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> okay, and do you keep that when you're off-season and on off-season, you, you, is it the same, roughly? Off-season will be that. Competition time, I'll put the odd drops at them. Okay. But generally I keep my numbers around about eight to 10. My, my rep range yeah. eight to 10. Um, intensity is there. The pound, as, you, as you're getting close to a competition, your poundages may drop a little bit. Mm -hmm. But as long as you're working as hard as you can, doing some force reps. Uh, the importance of a good spotter as well. Yeah. To get your last two or three force reps. Yeah, like a, like a training and, partner type of yes, thing. Yes, someone who's in touch yeah. with your mind and body as well. Yeah. You can, make you do them four reps, them yeah. ones are important. They're the ones that make the difference, right? Yes sir, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we'll, we'll be briefly touch on this. Um, so training, uh, how long will you train for during, during the workout? So 15 reps, 15 yeah, sets. Yeah, 45 to 15 minutes. 40, nice and sweet and sharp. Yeah, intensity. I think, yeah, I think if you've got much energy left after, after if you've got any energy left after an hour, personally, I, if, I've not, if I've got energy left, I've not worked hard enough. Yeah. That's a good point. And every work at us, you know, you work hard, don't you? You work full power, don't you? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So going back to this rest days now, do you have any days off training? I I train five days out of seven. Okay. So you have a couple of days off. Yeah. Um, and then you, and you feel they're important to you? Certainly, yeah. Yeah. 
I would like to say I'd have the weekend off, but it doesn't always work that way. I think you have to listen to your body. Yeah. And sometimes, as of previous last three days, I've done legs, I've done back, uh, so I've done legs, chest, and back. Today I feel I need a day off, so I'm on the day, I'm not training yeah. today. So it sort of evolves as you as you go. You yeah. listen to your body. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And am um, I right saying that over time you know your body better? Yeah, that you know, it does come you know, through time. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. When, when you're younger, you might think you have to do that day because mm -hmm. it's your special day. But as you become wiser and you you you, you learn to listen to it, you, you know, have to. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. Mm. That makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> right then, we've done that one. Okay, what's your, what's your training splits? So do you have a set training split? Do you have like, um, you know when you do like chest, yeah. back and all that, what's your yeah, training five, split? Yeah, five day split. Yeah, so, so split between... So legs, chest, back, shoulders, arms. Fantastic, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Do you put any core work in there, any abs and stuff? Yeah, certainly, yeah. yeah every yeah. day or do you put that in certain, certain um, days a week? Yeah, I'll put core in two or three times a week, yeah. Yeah. Just for 10 or 15 minutes at the end of the session. It's, yeah. It's, um, yes, it's tiring, it's, fat it's definitely fatiguing, but you should have enough energy to just keep your core right, you know? Yeah. So we talked a little bit about uh, training for a show. Um, what's like the biggest changes you make um, before a show? So like, you know, we're um, going from bulking, I'm ready mm -hmm. to go for a show. Yeah. Um, first thing I'll be doing is... Uh, Getting, shall we say, more regimented. Yeah. You know, we eat six meals a day. That's mm -hmm. the ideal, you know? My thoughts are seven, seven in the morning, seven, ten, one, four, seven, ten. That, you know, the, the meal times. I cannot commit to that, them, them hourly times exactly, <clears throat> but that's the direction, isn't it? Yeah, so um, within a certain time. Yeah, period. so I, I try and stick to that a little bit more. So get my 200, 200 grams of meat in, in my meals, you know, Meal preparation is important as well, isn't it? Totally. So it's there in place. Yeah, it stops, you, you, need it, yeah. It stops you going for the uh, mm -hmm. anything bad, right? Yeah. And um, uh, sorry, you, you did ask me what's the first thing you do? Redu well, reduce and cut out the junk. The junk food. Yeah, that's yeah. got to go first. I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah. So before you think about lowering carbs, um, get the junk out of there for a few weeks. You tighten up quickly, won't you? To be fair. Yes, you do. You change. Yeah. Quite a lot. Um, when I advise people about, shall I say, losing weight, the first thing you say is cut junk out, don't change anything else. Mm. Reduce the junk and the body changes anyway. Yeah, it does, that's <clears> true. <throat> yeah. Totally. I used to um, drink a lot of milk on the off season, mm -hmm. and that's the first thing I used to cut out of my milk. Yeah. And you, you, like a stone will come off in four weeks, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's mad, isn't it, how fast yeah. it comes. But, and you don't have to, it's not a big sacrifice, is it? Not really, no. no. You only have it because <coughs> you think you're going to grow. Yeah. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> Getting more calories in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that was the way years ago, wasn't it? Yeah, totally, yeah. Back in the 60s, they didn't realise why, did they? So they used to drink. 20 pints of milk a day, didn't That's it? right, yeah. To get the milk protein. Get the protein in. Mm. <laughs> I was definitely, I was definitely in that genre then. Yeah. 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 Do it different now, like, but. Yeah. So, so going back to a show now. Yes. Um, a lot of people um, get confused when they come to water depletion, don't they, for mm -hmm. a show. How do you, how do you do it? Well, in the contest prep, try to drink as near to 10 litres of water a day as I can. Right. Which is a lot of fluid to get through you, which means half the time you're drinking, the other time you're still at the toilet. <laughs> but it has to be done, you know, it's part of the process. Yeah. So then my water cut will be, as of five days out from the competition, I'll reduce from 10 litres a day to eight to six to four to two. Okay, so daily you take like a bit out? Just right? take a bit out, yeah. Okay. Um, and then, to say I've stopped my water, I don't. You no, know, just the, keep it in. At midnight of that last day, I will, if I say stop then, and I only sit in the morning of the comp. Yeah. Depends what time of the day you're on stage. If you're on in the evening, you need to sip some water throughout the day. Because you go flat with that without you water. Would, yeah, you would, yeah. You need water to, you know, for your muscles to, you know, to stay full. So, yeah. I say it's not, I'm, I don't do, that might sound like a mad water cut. No, it's not it's really. Not, it's just a reduction. So, you Some do, people you do, do, you do crazy ones, don't they? Yeah, people, do, people drink white wine and this sort of thing the night before, but I'm not a drinker, so 
I don't know, being drunk and <laughs> yeah. not being in control <laughs> is not for me. <laughs> no, fair enough, that's fair enough. <laughs> okay, so um, we've done underwater. Yes. Um, everyone sort of carbs up differently as well. Mm -hmm. um, so how would you um, carb up for a, for a show? If I say my average intake of carbs throughout my contest preparation will be about 250 grams a day. Yeah. When it comes to the last three days, which are carb, which are carb, sorry, please let me start the week before the comp. Yeah. For the first three days of that week, I'll do low carbs. Okay. So then from three days out, I'll do 900 grams on the first day, wow. 600 grams on the second day. Yeah. So 300 grams on the next day. Okay. So that's the day before the competition. Yeah. So you get, I feel bloated on the, the 900 gram day. Okay. Because you're eating every hour. And it's yeah, a lot it's, of carbs. It's a lot of carbs, 100 grams, yeah. Um, yeah. But then you're reducing, so you seem to take the bloat out of your stomach. Makes sense. And then yeah. you, like you're topping your muscles up. Then the 300 gram day, you can stay topped up. The day after, I still feel full and I'm getting on stage. That's why that, That's doing my it. process. That works. I think a lot of people would be similar to that. Yeah, a lot of people do different things, don't they? Yeah, but, yeah, but mm -hmm. that's a very, sort yeah. of clever way of doing it, thinking mm -hmm. about it like that. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we, we are a very well-travelled bodybuilder, Paul. Mm -hmm. Travelled all over the place, haven't you? All over the world. Yes. Um, so, um, how do you cope with the travelling? Because that it, can affect a lot of things, can't it? It doesn't bother me. Does that affect you? I'm, I think I'm lucky in that sense. Yeah. As you said, when we went to Australia. Yeah, yeah. You no, know, some people fly, don't they? But they somehow have a water all in yeah. situation. Do you remember the way back with, uh, with that, um, that Welsh lad who's in our flat? Yes, yeah, so let's not say his name because <laughs> if he watches this he may fall out with us. But yeah, yeah. Yes, um, yeah, it was poorly, wasn't it? He had a real bad uh, mm. uh, boat with that, didn't he? Well, yeah. can I tell the tale later? Of course you can. We're in Australia and <laughs> we did the competition on the Saturday and the, I say this is the first time I'd really met him <clears throat> and we got invited to a casino for a banquet. <laughs> and they put this the most amazing food was on these platters and trays of food. Oh, and good. this guy to my right here, I swear to God, he had twelve platefuls of food. I'm around. I'm around. I'm yeah. about to One surprise in this time. <laughs> and me and Bernie Cooper, as we mentioned before, um, we sat there watching him, thinking that lad's going to be ill. <laughs> but he wasn't. I, I swear to God, he ate the last plate full of food, like the first one. <laughs> he moved it down. It was a long diet, I think I had a gumby, yeah? <laughs> um, But as I say, t t to finish the tail off, Simon was the guy from Wales. That's right. Because yeah. um, all the, the four of us got an, had an apartment we shared. So we you know, say we were in the room, and Bernie was head cook, wasn't he? He was, <clears> yeah. So the, we were flying home on a Tuesday morning. But the banquet on the Sunday, <laughs> Monday morning, Bernie says to me, he says, right, we'll get Tim back on the chicken and rice. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. So even though we'd had the feast on the Sunday, because of the thought of the plane ride on the, on the Tuesday back home. Yeah, wise, wasn't it? I'm not saying not to put Tim's arm up his back, but, we, <laughs> you know, we got him back on the straight and narrow for that day. Yeah, needed it. So <laughs> I think the, the junk food had pretty much, pretty much left you. Yeah. So I say we cleaned you up. Um, but I do get the impression, and I don't mean I don't mean to insult you, Simon, if you're watching this. But I think you might have been sneaky easing, because come the day of the flight, his water retention was really bad, wasn't it? It was real bad. I believe yeah. his ankles were as big as his calves, sort of thing. Yeah, the doctor out there, I think. Didn't he did to phone America. Yeah, the pilot did. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so if you fly, yeah, try not to bin jeep before you fly off. <laughs> That's the moral of the <laughs> That's story. That's the moral of the story. <laughs> I suppose yeah. we could relate that to um, actually after a show because a lot of people would binge eat, you know, I'm, I'm yeah. one of them for it. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, when you, you know, you, you, you've got to be careful because you can put a lot of water on, can't you, if you really yeah. go crazy after mm -hmm. a show. So is that something you recommend? Like, you, know, you can't like, help yourself. No, yeah. I th and at the beginning, the beginning of my time, I guess like yourself, mm -hmm. you were 20 years old in, in Australia, was. weren't you? Yeah. Um, at the beginning, yeah, you, you've dieted for 15 or 20 weeks, whichever we're saying. Mm. And the sacrifice is you're not going to have any of that junk food. But when the moment the comp is over, <laughs> there's nothing to say you can't have it. Any, you know, there's no <laughs> trigger in your mind saying be good. So you go out there and you think, I'll have a little bit of chocolate and that turns to three or four bars, doesn't it? <laughs> and someone offers you a cake and you take the box and <laughs> before you know it, you put £10 overnight. Oh, it can happen, can't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I remember one of my friends, when he was a junior, actually, with um, with me when I was younger, um, 
he, after his show, uh, about um, probably, a, I think it might have been two weeks, two free stone he, he put on. Yes. I went around his house and mm-hmm. he was lying on his sofa with yeah. KFCs, everything you could imagine, mm-hmm. ice cream, and he's just watching TV, he's eating mm-hmm. food, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, thank God I've never heard anybody getting too ill with it, but yeah. the, the water and the pressure on your heart must be massive. Yeah, totally. Your blood yeah. pressure must be going through the roof as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. It can't be good but, for you. Like, no, yeah. but I, I dare say I did a time when, I, years before I knew you, Tim, um, I was in Spain doing a camp and, and we had this meal set up the night after, uh, the, just a few hours after the camp, and I ate plates and plates full of food. <laughs> and all of a sudden, just to try and draw the picture, I felt myself inflating. <laughs> <laughs> and I went to the bathroom and I just... Put it all down the toilet. Wow. Thank God, really, because it was so bloody uncomfortable. It, yeah. You know? It's not pleasant. Being no. There, really. So to try and... Yeah. Really. I'm glad I did it, but then what a waste of food. <laughs> you know? <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can with you on that one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, then. So, we've done that. Um, this is an important one, I mm-hmm. reckon. Okay, because a lot of people think they can... Um, jump into bodybuilding and become like champions overnight mm-hmm. especially these days with the social media out there yeah it's a lot of pressure yeah, yeah. so um, how long um, did it take you to build your show winning physique well I say I first competed in 1984 yeah the first time I won was 1993 there you go so nine years to win a comp nine years yeah I still think I was back in the day as you say there wasn't the internet <clears throat> so you go you do a comp you'd look at what was around on the stage, you'd go and watch one or two other competitions and you'd obviously look at your pictures, uh, which Roger Shelley, the man, the man, well, <coughs> Roger's still around now, the best photographer going, or one of the best. Yeah. Um, and you would you get some pictures from and you just, it's, it's a cold bodybuilding, body sculpting. Yeah. That's what it is at the beginning, isn't it? Totally. Because you need to add to the right places to, Make a complete physique. Completely, yeah. 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 So I say it took me nine years to win a comp. Probably few, probably another four or five years, I think, before I felt like You were sort of in control. I, I felt like I was in a good place. Mm. But then bodybuilding's bodybuilding it, so you're always trying to add a little bit more. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So when you obviously in the by the, the early two thousands you're pretty formidable and you know That's when I, I I felt I cracked it, yeah. 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 So uh, that's that's quite a few years, isn't it? Is that 16 years? Yeah, 16, 17 years. There you go. Yeah. There you yeah. go, guys. It doesn't happen overnight. No, and that's the competition's first out there, so... It is, you yeah. Know, you keep adding a little bit and hoping that what you take to stage is good enough to win. Mm. That's right, yeah. Because everyone's out there wanting to, to win, aren't they? Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right then, so... Um, we're going to talk about, like, your advice to people, OK? Yes. So... Um, there be some young budding bodybuilders out there, or yeah. even even mm-hmm. people who are just taking up the sport. Yes. Um, what's your advice to them uh, going forward? Well, first of all, as I said before, consistency being the key. Mm-hmm. Getting to the gym um, when you don't feel like it, because once you walk through the door and the iron's there, you just go for it, don't you? That's right. Yeah. You know, driving to the gym, and I've done it. You drive to the gym, you sit in the car for ten minutes, thinking, "This is the next record," then I'll go in. <laughs> or shall I go home? Well, no, let's go in the gym. Because once you start moving, I mean, you, you, you feel, go off and start releasing, don't you? You feel you, good, you, don't you? Yeah, you, you start feeling good. Um, that, and as I say, the importance of your food. You've, yeah. got, to, you've got to keep your food going. In. It's important, isn't it? Yeah. I'm not, because I mentioned before, I'm not a drinker. I'm not, I can't just sit here and try and preach to people not to ever drink. But it is against what we do. Yeah. So, as I say, um, the idea of your food being more important than, you, than alcohol, that's what I meant by drink. Yeah. Um, you have to socialise, you have to live, but um, I'm going to cut it off there, otherwise it sound like I'm preaching. <laughs> Not at all, no, you're giving advice yeah. to people. Is it, is you know? it each one or the other. It's important, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know. I mean, I've done, I've done years and stuff about drinking before now, because mm-hmm. I wanted to make sure I'll put the most weight on as possible. Yeah. You know, it's sacrifice. Mm-hmm. I mean, and it doesn't stop you going out and having fun. No, you know? no, yeah. well, that, that's the thing. You go out and have yeah. fun without getting, shall we say, absolutely legless. Yeah. Because you as remember that. I've been around. <laughs> I've, I've been there, and I've, I've, you say I've been around. And you see guys all the time. They have a good Saturday night, and 
they don't eat Sunday. Yeah, yeah. And they start to try and eat right on Monday. Yeah. So I've lost a few days of... Half a week gone, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that, they're, they're, they're going to be the, the gains you've, you've lost out on, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, You know, you will maintain a weight then, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Rather than gaining... Yes, the muscle. absolutely, yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. All right, Paul, before we, uh, we wrap this up, yeah. um, how important is it to complete your physique? So, um, you know, like, for example, not um, people don't train legs sometimes mm -hmm. and, um, and then wonder why they don't win bodybuilding shows and things like that. Um, I get, I'm blessed with a good set of legs. I was a sprinter and I was a footballer when I was a kid. And then, real, you know, I say I like lifting. So I think I've got a partly God-given gift of legs. But I enjoy training the legs. Mm. And if I don't hurt, if I don't hurt, them, if I don't hurt for two or three days after, I don't feel like I've trained them properly. So for me, and I would say that to everybody out there, train legs first. Yeah. Because your legs are the biggest muscle in your body, I do really think that stimulating your body into growth, you get your legs going and your upper body will follow. Yeah. Now don't put all your energy into legs because you do need to get your chest, back and shoulders going as well. Of course. But as I say, do not neglect legs. Do not neglect legs because no. it's easily, easily done. Yes. And um, if you've got the biggest upper body in the world mm -hmm. and the legs don't match, you're not going to yeah, win, are you? You're not complete. No, no. So it as a, not as a a top dabber judge here, yeah, you will know this matters, very, yeah, yeah. very importantly. Yeah, <laughs> balance and proportion. So. Going off on, onto this as well, I mean, yeah. condition for a show, um, that's, mm. is that really important for, for winning as well, conditioning? Yes, but you may, need to maintain the size. Yeah. So that's a delicate reduction of your carbs, but not total cutout. Yeah. And that's why you do it over a long period of time, so you reduce them a little bit. And as we've said numbers before, about if you were to go three stone off, start 20 weeks out, so you look to lose two pound a week. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it's not a lot, it's not a big ask. Over that 20 weeks is, you know, it'll get difficult at times. Oh, and it, it But as does, I say, you don't look at losing five pound a week because you'll, cr you'll end up crashing and feeling yeah. totally lifeless and stuff, you know. And if you don't give yourself enough time, mm -hmm. um, you'll end up coming in flat, won't you? Because yes. you'll be trying to get there to uh, you know right the right the end of the mm -hmm. end of the, the time scale and yeah. you have time to carve up right mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and practice your posing 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 practice from a long way out yeah because that's important it brings it? condition yeah 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 because it works your muscles from the inside if you understand you understand what i say by that yeah when you're tensing your muscles when you're still there you're not lifting weight to contract you're tensing from the inside. Mm, it's hard work. And it, bring, it is hard work. It's harder than a workout for some people. You'd be surprised how much you sweat by doing that. Yeah, but <laughs> it, it's important oh, because yeah. it, it makes condition. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. It's true. But going back to judging it as well, yes. um, obviously if you've got someone who's got a really good physique mm -hmm. and they can't pose, well that obviously would show on stage, wouldn't it? Certainly, yeah, yeah. And they, they a, might a not, good physique can they be might not badly, yeah. 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 So the posing is important as well. Yes, right? definitely. Yeah. Okay. Seek advice. Yeah. Where did you Where did you learn your posing from, Paul? Because you're you're renowned for being a uh, Roger Shelley. Yeah. Ro uh, I've got to yeah. I've got to say a big thank you to Roger Shelley. I, he actually probably one of the biggest inspirations in my life. I've got lots of people I can name here and thank. Mm. Um, God, numerous, mass, lots of people. But Roger, I will say he was at the first show I ever did. Now. I keep mentioning Roger, he really is a, a, a massive figure in, 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 my, in my life. Um, he judged that show, and at the time, he, he, I remember he patted him on the back and he said, you got some good going there, son. <laughs> and it inspired me. <laughs> um, and then there was a day, I say, it was probably over 10 years later, I'd done a show and he said, come and have a photo session at his studio in, um, towards Manchester. And I went on a cold winter night, <clears throat> and back in them days, there's no digital cameras. Right, right. So he said, I've got 36 pictures on this film. <laughs> he said, I'm not gonna waste any. He said, so when you do a, he, as I say, he, when you do a pose, let's say we're doing double biceps, you start with your legs. You push and twist your knees into the floor to tend your quads. You understand what I mean? Oh yeah, yes. yeah, totally, yeah. Then you breathe in, from your, take your wind into your diaphragm, and put your biceps up. If you've let your legs go, you wouldn't take the picture. <laughs> so you were tense, every bit of your body was tense before he pulled the trigger, as he said. I like he it. said, I'm not wasting the picture. <laughs> and he didn't. So that 
that was the best posing session I've ever had in my life. Awesome. And it set me up for life. Yeah, you never forget it. No, no, no. Yeah. And again, you're renowned for your posing, Paul. Well, thank you. I, I don't think I'm very, I'm not over artistic, but there's a right way and a wrong way. Yeah, you present yourself yeah. well, yeah. don't you? Yes, thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. So I think that's... Uh, we don't know, Tom. Most of our questions Nothing. answered. I appreciate you coming down, Paul. Thank you, sir. It's been a pleasure. It's been great, mate. Thank yeah. you. Thanks very much, Paul. Cheers, mate. Yeah. So, hope you have some um, lots of um, good points there to work on, guys. Um, make note, you won't get a better bodybuilder in this country than Paul. So, uh, see you again next time.